By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at another unsleeved revised battle. Yes, unsleeved revised is back on the channel and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, we are going to look at my high school deck. Actually, I've called it Timmy's high school deck. It's blue and it's black and it's full of mediocre revised cards. And I'm taking on my brother because whenever I play unsleeved revised, I always duel my brother. And uh, well, actually, I could play other players, but usually I play my brother. That's how the format got started. Anyway, he's playing with mono black and his deck is pretty good. Now, the rules of this format are quite simple. You can only play with cards from revised and they have to be unsleeved. We're just playing 60 card decks um, and maybe you're thinking oh but wait a minute you need to sleeve them up their value it's it's but you have to understand this is pure nostalgia we used to play unsleeved in this format we only play with cards that you know are damaged cards that are just you know being in a shoebox for so and so long um, you know and this is a way to see those cards you know give those cards some limelight enjoy these cards and really kind of take that journey back in time is because this is also the power level of the type of decks that we used to play with. Actually, the power level is a little bit higher than the decks we used to play with. Anyway, uh, you can see that all in the deck deck because there I'm going to share my decks. Before I jump into the deck deck though, I would just like to point out that as always, you can also choose to skip that section, go straight to the games. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps one of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and it'll take you straight to the action. And as for now, I'm going to start with the deck decks. I'm actually going to start with the deck of my brother, his Mono Black Brew. And here we see the Mono Black deck of my opponent, Yoop. And what a beautiful deck it is. Wow. I really, I really love to see those Frozen Shades in there. Maybe just start with the creatures first. So Frozen Shade, one black and two to cast for an 0-1 creature. That doesn't fly. You would think it flies when you look at the art, but it doesn't. Beautiful art by Dan Frazier, though. Uh, you can pay one black to give a plus one, plus one. So this is really a creature that gets better later in the game. You could even enchant it with a fear, another card in this deck. That would be pretty cool. I guess the downside, though, for my opponent here is that I'm also playing with black. I'm playing blue-black with some artifacts. So I think fear is not going to be that great against me. Um, he is playing with, look at that huge bomb in the deck, a nightmare. So... That Nightmare could be super decisive in this matchup. He's also playing with, with an Hypnotic Spectre. We see a Netling Im there to kind of force my creatures to attack. That could be quite good. I like the, the combo here between Netling Imp and Drudge Skeleton because he can force uh, me to attack with my stronger creature, just block it on the Drudge Skeleton and regenerate, and then next turn, you know, have an opening to perhaps attack with a Juggernaut because he's got four Juggernauts in this deck. That's actually kind of scary because they're only four to cast and they've got five powers. So that's pretty intimidating. And he's also playing with four Dark Rituals. So that Dark Ritual Juggernaut could mean that he can have a Juggernaut at turn two. That would be a huge problem for my deck. You know, my deck doesn't like the fast stuff. I, I, I want time, okay? So hopefully he cannot do that. Another really scary thing in this deck, in my opinion, is the Dark Rituals in combination with the Drain Lives. Like, he can make a huge Drain Life. And also, I like the combination of Drain Life and Pestilence because Pestilence is really good when you're ahead in your life total and Drain Life is going to help you to get ahead. And, of course, Drain Life is really good in a mono black deck. So, actually, for an unsleeved revised deck, this is looking like a pretty good list. I mean, I'm liking it. Now, let's take a look at my list. And here we see my deck. So this is really the type of deck I used to play with. I got to laugh because it just looks a lot like the deck I used to play with in 1995 when I was in high school. You know, uh, was I in high school? I think I was first year. But um, it's, it's pretty cool, you know. This is really the kind of power level that we used to play with. So it's blue and black. It's, it's unsleeved. It's really kind of the type of... Uh, of cards that I would just pull out of boosters and trade. Actually, it's slightly better than the type of cards that I used to play with because this actually has a lot of uncommons and some rares in it. And I used to play with mainly commons in those days. Uh, but I guess there is a little theme of the deck. So the main theme of the deck is pinging, right? I'm playing with four protocol sorcerers. Uh, I'm playing with three rod of ruins. So there's a lot of pinging. I'm playing with two clones. Hopefully I can clone my Timmies. And then, of course, to kind of control the game, I'm playing with some creature removal, so some terrors and some weaknesses. The terrors are going to be completely useless in this matchup, by the way. They're just going to be dead cards in my hand. 
Um, I'm also playing with a Jandra Settleback, which is pretty cool. So I can untap my Tim, deal an extra point of damage. I'm also playing with the Golems. I used to be a big fan of the Golems back in the day. They're 4 6, you know, that 6 defense just uh, gives a lot of stability. So I can keep my opponent at bay with my Golems and my Wall of Water, for example. And then I can continue pinging my opponent to death. But on top of that, I'm also playing with some strong flyers like the Hypnotic Spectre, of course. I've got two of those in this deck. I'm playing with an Air Elemental and a Phantasmal Forces. So, I mean, I've got some. I've got some air forces in here, which I think, you know, if I time it right, they could be quite good. Um, yeah, and what else is there to say about this deck? I guess what you're already noticing are all the altars and signatures on the cards. What I've done is I've took this deck with me to NoobCon uh, 2022 in Gothenburg, Sweden, and I asked the players there that I usually speak a lot with online, but now I saw them offline, so I asked them there if they wanted to make a little scribble on my card, if they wanted to leave a message or draw something on it, make a little doodle. And it's really cool to see that so many players were willing to do that. So thank you so much. Or maybe you recognize one of the cards that you've altered in this deck. Let me know in the comments if you do, by the way. Anyway, uh, this is my deck, which is just maybe a pile of nonsense. We looked at the deck of my opponent. Uh, so let's go to the match. Game number one. My opponent, Yoop, is sitting on the left with the mono black deck. I'm sitting on the right. Look at his hand. Only swamps and one juggernaut. Is he going to keep this? That would be kind of funny. Uh, I'm sitting on the right, so I'm playing blue and black with a lot of Tims. For some reason, I'm holding my cards upside down, but I've got a lot of lands too. I've got a Tim and a Hypnotic Spectre. That's better. I think that's better. I wonder, oh, he's going to keep the hand past the turn. I mean, he is playing with some Drain Lives and stuff, so that's pretty good with the Swamps and Frozen Shades, of course. Both starting with a basic Swamp, by the way, and passing the turn. And uh, we're just going to play out a lot of lands, I think, at the start of this game. This is what we used to do, you know, this is old school magic. There we see another swamp, still nothing, so we didn't draw into anything. So the next turn we're going to see a uh, Juggernaut, of course. I'm going to probably play out my Tim here. Oh, I'm, of course, Hypnotic Spectre first for the discard. So Hypnotic Spectre here. There we see a Juggernaut. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some damage, I wonder, or I'm going to play the Tim and Chump with it, but I'm definitely going to attack with Hypnotic Spectre here. Going to force my opponent here to uh, discard a card. Attacking for two, put him on 18. And of course, he's going to lose one of his cards. Probably going to be a Swamp, though. It would be really brutal if I take something that's not a Swamp. Yeah, that's a Swamp. That makes sense. Going to drop to 18. And I'm going to tap three. And I'm going to cast it Protocol Sorcerer. Which is uh, altered to look like a Juzam Jin. Yeah, there you go. I'm showing it. There's the attack for 5. I'm going to drop here to 15. Not going to chum block. Just going to take the damage. I mean... And I'm saying these golem is going to cost 6. So it's going to take another turn before I can cast it. What to do? I could block it on Hypnotic Spectre and then ping it to death. That's an option. So he's going to attack. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Blocking it on Hypnotic Spectre and then pinging it to death. Not sure if that's a good decision. Oh, look at that, a nightmare. Oh, that is brutal. That nightmare is really brutal. I'm on 15. That's a 6-6 six, six flyer. There we see an island tapping 6. There's an Obsanius Golem. Oh, it's coming really late to the party. I'm going to take 6 through the air here, it seems. Going to drop to 9. Oh, that's going to be painful. He's going to play a raise that on the Juggernaut, casting the Juggernaut. It's looking so bad. At least I can block the Juggernaut on the Obsanius Golem, though. So I wonder if he's got a plan with that, you know? If he has a plan of taking care of the Golem. Binging him at least for one. Dropping to his, he's dropping to 17. But look at my life total. I'm on 9. And I've got that huge flying creature there, the Nightmare. There's an island. What can I do, really? He's on 17. That's huge. Gonna tap 5. Can I... Okay, Air Elemental. At least it can jump block the Nightmare for a turn. And now he's gonna attack with the Juggernaut, which I'm gonna block on the Obsanese Golem. I mean, I'm not dead yet, but it's looking really bad. There's the attack with both creatures. So blocking around the Golem, still taking the damage, though. I mean, I gotta take a risk, right? 2-4... It's 8, though. I would go to 1. 
I mean, does it really matter if you go to one or three or whatever? He is playing with Drain Life, so pretty much taking the risk. I am taking the damage, gonna go to one. This is a big risk. I hope he doesn't have a Drain Life or else it's already over. So I'm gonna put him on 16 on his end step. So now I can attack him for eight points, gonna put him on eight. But that's not gonna be enough though. There is another Swamp. I mean, if I can just keep throwing chump blockers in front of it, or maybe find my Phantasmal Forces, which also has four power. I am tapping four mana. Are we gonna see a Phantasmal Forces? Rod of Ruin, attacking here for four. Gonna put him on 12. Probably gonna chump block next turn with the Air Elemental. He is throwing a lot of swamps, by the way. So chump blocking, there's another Juggernaut. Oh, this is so risky. This is so unfortunate. Gonna ping him twice, of course, with the Rod of Ruin and the Tims. I'm gonna put him on 10. I don't think I'm gonna make it, also because of the Juggernaut. I need a Flyer first to stop the Nightmare. I mean, that is... That is point of business number one. Attacking with everything here. I'm on one. What is he gonna do now with the Juggernaut? Yeah, I'm gonna tap, I'm gonna block the Obsanius Golem. That makes sense. What am I gonna do here? Tapping a black Howl from Beyond. Can I make it with a Howl? I don't think I've got enough. Oh, there's Dark Ritual. So it's three mana. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Oh, I'm stealing this game. This is amazing. I thought it was dead and absolutely done for, but this Howl from Beyond with the beautiful Kiss Altar is winning it here for me. That is insane. That is so insane. Wow, the terror would have saved him. The terror could have taken care of the Tim. Oh my God, what an ending to this game. Absolutely epic. Winning game number one, feeling really good. I thought it was so, so dead. I mean, that black deck is looking super strong. This is just the first game though. Oh, okay, I'm gonna shuffle up and, uh, and we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So I won that first one. That means that my opponent, Joop, is on the play, starting with a basic swamp. Probably a pass here, unless he's got a dark ritual. Just a pass. Let's see what I can do in my turn one. I think both of us just mainly play lands in the first couple of turns. There's a swamp passing the turn. There's another swamp. Look at that, a turn two play. There's a drudge skeletons, one, one, one uh, black to regenerate. So pretty good creature. Difficult to get rid of because of the regeneration. I also have a turn to play, it seems. There is a Black Knight. So both of us are really like starting off strong here. The early turns of the game. Let's see if Yoop also has a turn three play. There's another Swamp hitting the board. There's a Frozen Shade, the O1 creature that you can pump. One black plus one plus one. It does give me an opening though. I can attack now with the Black Knight. But that Frozen Shade is gonna be a problem next turn. If I can find a weakness, that will be ideal to put on the shade. Tapping three, do I have a Timmy? There is a Tim Prodigal Sorcerer, which is pretty annoying for Yoop, right? Because I can, I can start pinging the Skeleton or the Frozen Shade, forcing Yoop to invest black mana into it. There is a Terror though on the Timmy. That is a really good move. So the Tim is gone and I wonder what he's gonna do. Is he gonna keep his mana open to regenerate? He could attack, of course, with the Exactly, with the Drudge dealing one damage, then if I attack with the Black Knight, he can pump his Frozen Shade to a 2-3 and my Knight will die, so I'm not going to attack with the Black Knight either, unless I can get rid of the Frozen Shade, of course. Playing an Island here. It looks like I'm not going to attack. Ooh, I want to do something. Tapping three, are we gonna see another Tim? No, there's an Hypnotic Spectre. Now that Spectre is a problem for my opponent because remember, it does fly and the Frozen Shade doesn't, so it can fly over the Frozen Shade and then force my opponent to discard some cards. There are not a lot of flyers in the deck of Yoop. He also plays with some Hypnotic Spectres and with a Nightmare, but I believe that's it. There's the attack by the Frozen Shade. Yeah, this is difficult, if I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna have to just let it go, take the damage, but he can of course pump it up. He'll definitely keep one black open, I think, to regenerate the drudge. I am in the tank though, it seems. 
Ooh, there's a ritual. So the dark ritual is basically a plus three, plus three on the frozen shade. So he's dealing four points of damage. And he's playing another drudge. It does mean that he cannot regenerate though. So that means I can now attack with both creatures. But then of course I'm opening myself up already being on 15. Yes, yeah, so I'm not doing that. Going to put Yoop here on 16 and he's going to lose one of his cards. Okay, let's see what card it is. It's a terror. Okay, that's another dead card for him. Remember, I'm also playing with terror, so maybe we both have terrors in hand. <laughs> of course, you cannot play terror on artifact creatures or on black creatures. Look at this. So first forcing him to discard the terror, then playing out the air elemental. That is fantastic. And there's the attack. So now the question is, am I going to block on the air elemental or am I going to double block, for example? I could kill it if I double block, but then he can kill my air elemental. Wow, look at that, making it into a 4-5, four, 4 points of damage, dropping to 11. The Frozen Shade is really a problem for me here. There's another Swamp. I still kind of feel like maybe a double block would have been a good thing. Tapping 4, there's a Rod of Ruin. Probably going to attack here again with the uh, Hypnotic Spectre. Oh, also attacking with the Air Elementals. Going to put him on, on 10 here. Six points of damage and he's going to lose his last card. That's a Jade Monolith that he's losing. He's going to untap the Frozen Shade here, I assume. Yeah, this is, this is really difficult for Yoop, I mean, yeah, he's gonna attack, but remember, he's on 10, though. He's quite low. Then again, I'm on 11. There's a Ritual. Whoa, six points of damage. I love to see the Synergy Dark Ritual Frozen Shade. It's really cool. It's gonna put me on five now. Oh, he's so close to victory. There's another island. What am I gonna do? Attacking only with the air elemental, putting him on six. Now what I could do next turn is, is use my Rod of Ruin to deal one damage to a Drudge, and then he has to uh, pay a black to regenerate it. That could be an option. And then it also gets tapped, so it can no longer attack or block. Okay, you just attacking though with the Frozen Shade. And I'm going to put my Hypnotic Spectre in the way. Oh, he's attacking with everything here. That is an interesting decision. I feel right now what I should have done is use my Rod of Ruin on one of the Skeletons when he says, I want to go into attack. Before I know, of course, if he wants to attack with the Skeletons, I feel like I should have used the Rod of Ruin. And he's going to kill my Hypnotic Spectrum. I'm going to take two damage from the Drudges. Going to drop to four. But, I mean, he is completely open. He's on six. Did he expect to win here, perhaps? Going to put him on 5 here on end step. And then I'm going to win. Yeah, I think attacking here with the drudges was a bit of a mistake. And that is giving me to win. Wow, I'm beating this mono black deck 2 to nothing. I do feel kind of lucky there. And I believe when we discussed it, you also said, yeah, that was a mistake. I don't know what I was thinking. But um, hey, man, I'll take it. I'll take it. It's a win with my uh, pinger deck, my high school, Timmy high school deck. I really enjoyed playing with this deck. I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode on Timmy Talks. Let me know in the comments below if you did. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to like, share, and comment on this video. Do any of those things. They all help the channel move forward. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe as well. All that helps the channel. And then there's one other thing you can do, and that's becoming a Patreon, by a patron, I should say, via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And there you can find out how you can support the channel financially. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a sponsor of the show. It already starts with $1. Please check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And talking about that, when you join the program, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?